Let's show us the yard. Give me one hand. It was Danny, and today we're here to talk about a new gun. Now, I fired the gun at the range already, so it's not as new as this video is. But me informing you about it is going to be new. I have the box and everything, but it's no different from the regular trash that you get with any gun you buy. It's a whole bunch of paper, a lock, a, um, you know, clearing pins. You know what I'm talking about. One of them. There we go. One of these, okay? One of these things. Things that nobody really use when you're putting your weapon. I guess to let the range officers know that the gun is safe, but it's a gun, so chances are for that range, except the range is meant to be fired. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the situation. This is the MMP Compact 22, one of the latest guns to my collections. And on it, it's sporting the Olight Valerie 2. Valkyrie, not Valerie. Valkyrie. So, can't put in the comments if I beat, it to, beat you to it. What I like about this, it's a Smith & Wesson. And you know, big Smith & Wesson fan. Um, Pause. Now that we're in a better place, we get back to the meats and potatoes. As I was saying earlier, it's sporting the Valkyrie. Valkyrie, can't talk about it if I beat you to it in the comments. Um, to Olay. Got this on sale. Pretty dope little flashlight. Um, it has a barrel that you can thread. A, um, you can change this out. This piece right here in the front. Get a good clear look at that. You could take this piece off and you can put a, um, what am I talking about? Like a muzzle break or a threading thing on front of it. You know what I'm talking about. So I ain't even going to try to like, try to figure it out. Normally they can come with it, but, um, to my surprise, most of the compact 22s come with this piece that you can just screw this off and then it's threaded, threaded barrel so that you can put a can on it if you wanted to. I didn't take it off because I refuse to pay the, um, unconstitutional, price to put a silencer on a weapon that you're allowed to have i mean if you're a criminal it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you're not going to try to be quiet anyway if you're a criminal and if you're you're probably gonna get it illegally because you already illegal ain't nothing new to you so i find that just dumb um so they all come like this i've been looking for this gun for a while i found it when i saw it i bought it how much i spent let me think about that doesn't matter point is if you want it you should buy it um, real talk, it's probably going to run you around, uh, $500, $400, I mean, there's so many things you can do, you can get it from someone cheaper, buy it second hand, buy it used, whatever the case may be, do what you do, um, other than that, yeah, it has a threaded barrel, really light, speaking on the barrel, let's get back to that, this is the, so, I like everything pretty much about this gun, except for the fact that compared to the other Smith & Wessons that have the piece that you can change you know the um the grip to make it fatter so normally you could change this this part right here to make it be like so it can be fat or wider for people who got bigger hands uh you can't do that here but you get tape in and get the same effect it's not as grippy you feel real plastically compared to other models that I've held or used other than that, the trigger is the same as all of the Smith & Wesson triggers. Most of the functions are the same, except for cleaning. To break this down, it is a process. Oh, I got this dope um, ambidextrous uh, safety 
that I never use. I only hit it by accident whenever I'm trying to do other things. And I keep on thinking that it's supposed to release the, um, lock the, the, the pistol, but it don't. Anyway, so to break it down now, you know, it's like, it's really weird. You know, you got to pull it back and twist it up. Let me tell you the funny story, right? Whenever I get a weapon, I, I get a little bit too excited. I get in the parking lot, bust it out the box, and I just see if I can break the gun down real quick. I thought I broke this because this piece don't come off. It actually stays on the weapon. Now, I've seen videos of this before I bought it, and I knew that, but in the excitement when I made the purchase, um, I, I forgot. And I was like, kind of, I was a little bothered and turned off about the um the pistol and then you know i got my senses and you know moved on moved on i mean other than that like i said it's a smooth gun you can't really put it on wrong if you put it on upside down this piece doesn't sit correctly i guess the back of it is threaded so it can like fit into a groove underneath the barrel you gotta be really careful too because you could really damage this so again i'm not a big fan of this approach to breaking down the weapon but it does take some getting used to because when i tell you i was taken i was like what is going on i was like what is going on and um And you know, you can't fire 22s without the magazine being inside of the actual pistol. So, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Other than that, it's a pretty good pistol. Compared to like the Glock 44, um, it's definitely inferior. I, I thought I would have liked it. Um, I took it to the range and I fired both and I just preferred using the Glock just because of the way it breaks down. It breaks down like a Glock. Um, easier better feel it feels like a glock you know if that means anything it feels like a glock 19 when you have when you fire it uh it doesn't have a beaver tail like this that's as pronounced but uh, let me show you the magazine for the smith and wesson this is the magazine for the glock they all work the same they got this pretty little piece that you can press down to uh load it this magazine just felt feels like it's built better um, the metal, it don't feel bad, but, you know, I don't prefer it. So it's all about preference. Um, you get the same, everything on this works like a Glock, you know, down to like the breakdown of it. I'm not doing it because I genuinely hate, all right, fine. You guys ask, I really hate how Glocks break right now, to be honest with you. It breaks down like a Glock, real smooth, real easy. In fact, it's kind of what you're used to whenever you have to clean a weapon. You get four pieces compared to the three pieces that you get with the Smith and Wesson. Really annoying, but it's something that I think you get by. And it, it, like I said, initially I didn't touch this gun for about uh, two weeks because it was just weird. That kind of freaked me out. And I thought something was wrong with it. And I thought I made a bad purchase. Um, but I didn't. It worked fine. Um, it's not as girthy as, as let's say, the Glock version. I guess the Glock version just feels more like a, like a gun. And I think that the um, Smith & Wesson, it just doesn't have the feel that you would expect it to have for um a pistol even a 22 especially especially if you fired like if you fired like the glock then you know you're kind of not gonna like 
you know, you're not gonna like this. Cause I think I said, I, oh, your Glock, you know, it can fire without a mag. You have to put the magazine inside of the uh, Smith and Wesson to fire. That's really stupid. But I don't know why. I mean, I ain't make it, so I can't. I can't make that call. Um, definitely a girthy. The Glock has more width to it than the Smith and Wesson. Now this is supposed to come. It carries the same amount of bullets. This feels more like the Smith and Wesson compacts. You know, like the small joints. Not so much. Not, not even like a compact. Like the shield. Not like 2.0 shields and stuff like that. That's what this feels like. Um, and I feel like maybe that's what they should put on it, like 22 compact shield, because the compact 22 actually it's has a fuller feel, kind of like, kind of like the Glock 19, which so it would have been like benefit them to lean more toward the compact, like 2.0 versus the shield. Uh, so it's a little bit of a misleading when you give when you get this but it fires well it fires good i'll probably put some shots and i'll be firing it randomly throughout the video um both of them that is because i fired both of them to do a comparison and uh yeah yeah, yeah they're pretty dope guns i'm not gonna knock it this is heavier actually and this is feels a little bit lighter same amount of magazines the magazine for this just feels better um the magazine for the Smith and West, the magazine for the Glock feels better. The magazine for the Smith and Wesson, I think, is more money. You're probably paying for that metal. Uh, but with 22s, you don't really need that much, especially how fast you can reload. Two should do you well. You're not going to use this weapon for self defense, even though it might be just as good, you know, in an event that you need to kind of uh, scare someone away. It'll get the job done. My overall impression for this, uh, if you have a 22, yeah, I definitely say go ahead and get one of these. Um, but there are better ones on the market. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that. You know, I like Smith and Wesson and all, but there's the Ruger. The Ruger makes a better 20, uh, 22. The Glock 44 is actually really nice, really nice to fire. And um, this, while this is a fun gun, you know, the cleaning part of it kind of takes away from me actually enjoying the pistol so with that said thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video remember to like share and subscribe leave some comments down below um play nice and one